Hello, my name is Kerry Snyder, and I'm one of the co-founders of KEF Robotics. Today, I'm going to talk about how our company is using Julia to rapidly develop and commercialize autonomy for robotic drones. Briefly, KEF Robotics is a small robotics company based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's about a year and a half old. Our goal is to develop software, and occasionally hardware, to give any small drone autonomous capabilities. These capabilities include figuring out where the drone is, known as navigation, identifying obstacles and not crashing into them, known as hazard avoidance, and detecting interesting things and figuring out where they are, which we call object detection. This video shows all of these capabilities running in real time on board a drone using just a pair of cameras, an IMU, and an NVIDIA embedded TX2 processor. It shows both a top-down and first-person view of the drone flying through a series of waypoints while avoiding hazards and detecting and localizing humans. There have been a few talks at past JuliaCons discussing applications of Julia to humanoid robotics and UAV simulation, so definitely check these out if these ideas interest you. However, the use of Julia for robotics is not super common, so making this decision as a small and new company was a distinct choice. One of the main goals of Julia is addressing the two language problem, where software developers prototype in Python or MATLAB and then port their code to C or C++ for performance. We believe that this problem is especially prevalent in robotics for a few reasons. One, robotic software is often very math heavy, regularly pulling from a wide variety of fields of mathematics, including linear algebra, differential equations, manifold geometry, nonlinear optimization, and constrained optimization. And two, robotic software must run in real time and interact with the real world. You can get away with slower prototype software when using simulation or pre recorded data, but you can't slow down physics when you go to actually deploy your software in the real world. In this presentation, I hope to illustrate how Julia can address the two language problem for robotics and discuss how we've progressively developed more advanced robotic software in Julia at KEF. I'll talk about two main modules that were developed and deployed in Julia a hazard avoidance mapping and guidance system, and a nonlinear model predictive controller. One of the first capabilities that we developed in Julia was a hazard detection and avoidance system. This system takes three inputs. A series of depth maps, which are like an image, where each pixel represents the depth to an object in the scene. Pose data, representing the position and orientation of the drone at a given time. And a list of waypoints, which are the x, y, z positions the drone will attempt to reach. The output is a safe trajectory, which is represented by a spline. The pose data is used to fuse depth maps into a local voxel map, where each voxel represents the probability that a certain half meter cube has a hazard in it. This map is maintained for a small area surrounding the drone. The guidance system formulates a cost function to optimize the trajectory parameters, which are the spline control points, based on the distance to the nearest hazard and the total acceleration required, which makes the trajectory smooth. Our system is based on this 2017 paper from the Technical University of Munich with some modifications for our specific needs. First thing I'd like to show is our circular buffer voxel map, which doesn't do any particularly crazy math, but helps to highlight the value of multiple dispatch and broadcasting. This voxel map maintains hazard information for the area surrounding the drone, clearing out sections of the map as the drone moves and using ray tracing to update occupancy from incoming depth data. We dispatch the get index and set index methods on the circular voxel buffer struct to offset coordinates by the current center location and our known resolution and size when indexing into the internal OCC 3D array. When the drone moves, we recenter the circular buffer and clear out the newly invalidated voxels. To do this, we compute the change from our current center location and then zero out the relevant indices in the underlying array for each axis. This snippet only shows the x-axis, but the y and z are nearly identical. 
The use of ranges and broadcasting assignment helps keep this code compact and relatively understandable. Next is our cost function. This function includes fairly complex functionality, including sampling of a quintic B-spline trajectory, trilinear interpolation from the 3D distance map array, generators, and re reductions. And yet, we can easily compute the gradient using multiple different methods, including automatic differentiation and finite differences. To optimize this cost function, we leverage the Julia library's finite diff compute the gradient, and optim to do gradient descent. We also have some custom code to build a vectorized version of our system that is compatible with finite diff and optim. There are a few different existing libraries that do this, but we haven't yet found a coherent solution that is both efficient in terms of allocations and also works for arbitrary structs. We also include a special feature that lets us zero out the gradient for certain fields during optimization. For example, in our trajectory structure, we store start time and duration information that we want to keep constant during optimization. This light use of metaprogramming also allowed us to easily add a feature to ignore the z-axis of our trajectories during optimization, which allowed us to develop and field test the system in 2D before moving to a full 3D hazard avoidance. Our build sys function returns the error gradient function that you pass along to optim, the vectorized initial value from the structure. We can then optimize this function, retrieve the results from optim, and reconstruct the structure for future use. We also do only a handful of iterations and randomized restarts, which are common for these types of highly nonlinear robotic guidance problems. This animation shows the hazard avoidance process the red trajectory is the initial straight line trajectory to the next waypoint. The blue trajectories are the intermediate outputs from the optimization routine that are found to be unsafe. And the green trajectory is the safe optimized trajectory that the drone will then begin to follow. The mapping and guidance algorithms operated around four hertz when all of the rest of our system is running, which is limited by the processing time required to generate the depth data. This limits our maximum flight speed, but it's currently not the primary constraining factor in the system design. The next module I'm going to talk about is our new controller, which is a nonlinear model predictive controller, which is used to determine drone commands required to follow a trajectory given arbitrary constraints. And a nonlinear model predictive controller does this by looking forward in time at a few discrete increments, specifically two seconds forward at 0.1 second intervals, and optimizing our deviation from the desired trajectory while simultaneously enforcing our constraints. Constraints can apply to the predicted states or the control inputs. Uh, examples of constraints include the maximum velocity, minimum or maximum thrust, or maximum tilt angle. All of these are useful for ensuring a smooth drone flight. A constraint is also used to enforce physical consistency, ensuring that the predicted states match earlier states given a differential equation model of the system. This animation shows a slowed down series of iterations of the controller. The longest coordinate axis represents the current location and orientation of the drone. The green line represents the desired sinusoidal trajectory. The shorter, thicker coordinate axes represent the desired positions and orientations in the two-second future time window. Thinner, narrower coordinate axes represent the optimized future positions and orientations when accounting for the constraints. Formulate our optimization problem as a constrained factor graph. Each factor references a number of keys which are pointers to variables that we're going to be optimizing. In this case, SI is the ith state, and CI is the ith control input. The factors also get past a function, which computes the objective value. Finally, they store the relevant objective and covariance data for cost factors, or upper and lower bounds for constraint factors. This factor graph structure naturally encodes the block-sparse formulation of our constrained nonlinear system, 
which lets us easily construct a sparse Jacobian for optimization purposes. The key factors are cost factors, which penalize deviations from the desired trajectory, control constraints, which constrain the controller inputs, which in this case are collective thrust, which nominally ranges from zero to one, and desired angular velocity, which is in radians. Finally, we have the physics constraint, which uses the differential equation model to propagate the state and control values and ensure that this propagated state matches the next discrete state. This predict function started as a simple Euler integration, but now actually performs a modified fourth order method for integration on manifolds. We can easily compute the Jacobian of this function using uh, automatic differentiation, which would be very challenging to do in C++ or even manually. Since this graph structure is the same every time, we only have to build this factor graph once, and then we can update the values and solve it at each controller iteration. Solving this factor graph uses an algorithm called sequential quadratic programming, which is similar to gradient-based methods for optimizing nonlinear systems, except that the gradient step is computed using a constrained quadratic program using the linearized costs and constraints from our nonlinear factor graph. First, we linearize the system at the current values, which computes the residual value and the Jacobian of the residual function at, for each factor. Next, form explicit sparse shuffles this block sparse data from each factor into a few dense vectors and sparse matrices. The dense vectors collect the residual and upper and lower bounds, and the sparse matrices collect the approximate cost Hessian and the Jacobian of the constraints. We pass these to OSQP, which solves this constrained optimization and computes an update, which we then apply to each value, which is similar to a gradient step that reduces our cost. We do one iteration of this optimization per run of the controller so that we can compute a control signal at at least 50 hertz, but still converge to follow the desired trajectory. This is known in literature as real-time iteration. This video shows the controller running in real time on board one of our test drones under motion capture. We still have some tuning to do, primarily in quantifying the end-to-end -end latency of our system, but this does prove that the overall concept works. Along with the actual math and implementation, we ran into some practical concerns in development and testing of these modules in Julia. First, we were able to very easily port all of our software from 64-bit x86 to the 64-bit ARM processor that is used in our drone, specifically the NVIDIA TX2. However, we had significant issues with the startup time of Julia, which is well known in the community as the time to first plot issue. This issue was particularly bad on the slower ARM CPU cores. For some of our modules, pre-compiling a custom sys.so using package compiler helped alleviate these issues at a cost of flexibility and preparation time. At this time, we still see a very slow startup for our controller, even with the pre-compiled SysSO, which is likely due to some combination of static arrays, forward diff, and anonymous functions. We've also had very good luck with the native library cross-compilation tooling developed by Julia, which allowed us to trivially port the OSQP library to 64-bit ARM, even when this was not directly supported by the upstream Julia bindings. Second, we have not yet fully removed allocations from our code, which would be desirable, especially for the controller, to remove any jitter due to garbage collection. Fortunately, we still have an autopilot running in hard real time and doing low level control, so we can get away with some basic CPU set shielding to achieve successful flight. Some other things that we've noticed are that the allocation tracking built into Julia has some trouble precisely locating allocations. Also, we found inlining can significantly affect whether or not a function allocates. This is affected by changing Julia versions or changing the size of functions. We've had the most success by using the allocated macro in unit tests to ensure that our relevant functions don't allocate. Thirdly, we've had good luck with Robot OS JL to connect these modules to our other C++ and Python 
modules using the publish subscribe bus provided by Ross. Robot OS JL works pretty well by using PyCall to connect to the Ross Python library and marshal types back and forth. Going forward, we're looking to develop a more direct client library interface to ROS2, but we haven't got that started yet. We have a significant code base that includes a mix of Python, C++, and Julia, all interacting through ROS1 and Onyx, which is a runtime for deep neural network models. Right now, all of our ML models are developed and trained in PyTorch, in Python using PyTorch, due to the community and model support over Flux. We are considering some applications of scientific machine learning going forward for navigation, guidance, and control. And we'd likely revisit and evaluate Flux for those particular applications. Our state estimation does stereo inertial odometry, which is tracking features and images to figure out how the drone is moving. It makes heavy use of OpenCV and GTSAM for computer vision and nonlinear optimization. Equivalent library support is very much in development in Julia, so we'll probably stick with C++ for that code for now. However, we will be prototyping some of our more advanced computer vision modules in Julia for an upcoming project. We also have another project to ensure that our autonomy system can be rapidly ported to new and different processors and cameras. So we're looking at leveraging Julia's strengths in metaprogramming and GPU acceleration to achieve cross-platform efficient algorithms. If any of the, these ideas interest you, we are hiring right now, so feel free to get in touch, and thank you very much for your time.